So there's a aliveness, a, a, a sense of that what is happening right now is incomparable. So what is, it can't be compared. So that's how we know things, via comparison. It's not big, oh, so it's little. That's how knowledge is built. So, what we're sharing about here at this meeting doesn't have anything that it can be compared to. <laughs> this is this is incomparable. I, I wanted to say it's fucking incomparable, but just to emphasize that it's fresh, it's ever new, it's never happened before. And so when I think I'm a separate me, I, I miss the aliveness. The magic, the childlike wonder. Wow, it's raining. It rained today in, in LA this morning and all last night. And then today it was beautiful. How did that happen? How is this happening right now? So we could say there's just what's happening and what's happening is incomparable. So that's it, it's just this, just exactly this, just exactly this, this is everything. Already, it's already everything. And that can't be known, right? How are you gonna know everything? So that's why we talk about unknowing. It's not a knowing. You're never gonna know it. You're never gonna know everything.
But thankfully, everything doesn't need to be known. It just is. It's just. So we could open it up to sharing. If anybody would like to share, feel free to unmute, jump in. I just want to thank you for that beautiful opening. It really took me out of my head and into my heart. Uh, thank yes, you. thank you. Thank you. Well, because everything looks alive and amazing when there's just this. It's just like, there's not that itch to be somewhere else. So it's like, wow, look at that. But, you know, as, who is saying when you go, whoa, I know what you're talking about, but it's where I always get stuck. Everything, no me. That's okay, but no me to experience who's going, whoa, that had to be me or you, unless everything is saying, whoa, in itself to everything. So everything is experiencing everything. Is that more? Okay. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> which, which then, oh God, oh man, okay. It somehow includes, <laughs> but I think I am. Yeah. It would include that too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mike, Michael, when I hear this hearing, there is that quality of unknowing, but there is a quality of a knowing, a knowing that I might say, whoa. In fact, as I've listened to many of these great teachers, much of their teachers were to, teachers were chasing after or educating or fixing or caring about those people. Uh, for example, Nisargadatta would say, uh, catch hold of the knowledge I am. That is the quality I am, the felt sense no, I am. No, Michael, no, that's not what this meeting is about. This meeting's about there's nothing to catch hold of already. Then, then if you, you say that, and I agree in the level that I'm aware of that, but there is a Michael that reacts and feels. How, how do I extirpate that? Well, you don't. There's no you there already. Those are just natural bodily reactions. I see natural bodily reactions that I that that are that are experienced personally, although I'm aware they are from another point of view illusory. Is that fair or not? It, quite? It, it, yeah, they, no. The pain. <laughs> I had an exceptionally painful MRI today, and my shoulder. You have to hold your arms over your head for about an hour, and okay. I'm not used to that. And no, the pain was very very real. There was right. definitely pain there. There was just no body, no separate me there who thought that pain was theirs. But there was definitely pain. I can't say that 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 I hear you and I believe you, seeing evidence of it, but that's not my entire confession. I wake up with a sense of a pain body or, or feeling, or there's a Michael, and then I recognize it. There's recognition, but it's a residual quality of identity. 
Now, that's valid and accurate, but it certainly I completely agree it's illusory. And I completely can hear you. I, I don't fully yet integrate it here. The, the, the freedom that you have to let that be and not take it personally. If that's what I'm understanding. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm, so, I don't know what you're feeling, but it sounds like, gee, I'd like some of those. You know, I'd like to have that when I grow up. <laughs> yeah, so that whole story doesn't belong to anybody. Uh, you know, that expression, you could fool me. Well, I certainly was fooled this morning with what showed up, you know, that, you know, and I asked, them, whose mind is this? What the, what the F do you want? You know, but there it was. Yeah, it just wasn't yours. There's this, <laughs> yeah, it's just, what's, it's just, what's, it's just what's happening. It, it it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. But I think I don't hear that yet. I don't. Um, what's the no, word? Rock, no. I don't grok. I don't grok that yet. You're not gonna. There's no you there already to grok okay. it. Okay. But there's no you there to not grok it. I got it. There's just no you there. It's all this. Every itch, every scratch, every pain, every sound, every woe is this. May I ask you a question, Michael? Okay. When you were in that position during the MRI, <clears throat> apparent you or the awareness, how did you understand the pain or how did you, uh, what was it again that was Yeah. Yeah, there's no there's no there's no answer. Yeah, okay. No, I'm 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 getting that. There's no answer, but there's a certain point the, when you make that confession and, and I I believe you. I, I don't think you're lying to me at, at all. And I I feel no resonance that this isn't true. And yet again, I'm juxtaposing what I experienced this morning, you see, was not quite that same. Uh, uh, let's say freedom or lightness of being, or even though there was quality of pain, as you said. Yeah. So the suffering is the me imagines it, that there must be control. There just must be something I can control. And there just isn't. Mm hmm. So it's very, I'll just say it this way. It's very counterintuitive. <laughs> I should say, yes, it is. Yeah. 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 Yes, it's, it's counterintuitive to the me because the me is looking for something valid and accurate. There's a, and I, I'm hearing that, I'm hearing like a, a looking for what is the valid and accurate thing here, you know, which is, a, it's a valid and accurate story. You know, if we found it, it would be a story. And, 
it wouldn't add anything. The, the valid and accurate doesn't add anything to this what is. It doesn't get us anywhere. The me is just this looking for, for, for well, what is it looking for? Looking for something that isn't here. Something right, something, some answer, something valid, something more valid than just this, you know, like a valid relationship to pain or, you know, some something that would be better than just whatever is. And that is the me. It's just this looking, looking for this thing that's always just, just over there. As anyway, that's what I'm hearing. So I'm just sharing that. But it's all very rich. All the questioning of the me. It always ends up in a story, another story. It's also a lot of times the stories are connected to an apparent comparison that that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> like an imagined you comparing itself to another imagined you, and there aren't any, and none of them have done anything. None of them has, have caused anything, have done anything, or can fix anything. You know, I'm I'm really interested in um, the part of the discussion here, and I, I don't know if this is true or not, but it keeps occurring to me, like recently I was hanging out at a meeting um, where the individual had spent a couple years with Nisargadatta. And, um, you know, for years and years, apparently Nisargadatta wrote books about I am that, you are the absolute, you are... Uh, et cetera, et cetera. But it's an I am, I am. And uh, and then there's the, there's the, <laughs> the apparent uh, radical non-dualists, which basically are, are not saying I am anything. <laughs> They're saying it's just this, it's just this. There's no central point or perspective. There's no separation. There's no one thing with consciousness coming through it, being aware of itself. There's none of that. There's just this. And uh, the, those two things are very um, curious. They're very curious expression. And I know that they resonate with different people. And, and I understood that Nisargadatta at actually the end of his life uh, wrote a final section of um, information that basically disavowed the I am, but for some reason, uh, you know, it for some reason or or for no reason, for no one, it it still resonates with various people, and uh, and so that's uh, it's interesting to me. Yeah, yeah Ma Maureen, that's so funny because just yesterday 
I was saying to Dan on the phone, we were talking and I was pointing out how Nkosi will often talk about this in two different ways. Like when he talks to Alice or Chuck or even here, you know, he'll sometimes talk about there's no you. And then other times he'll say, you're everything. I, I can't it's I can't imagine that either one is wrong. What I noticed was when I was in that meeting, I had no idea of what people were talking about. But also when someone says it's just this, I also have no idea what what this is. Um, yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can go a lot of ways because when I used to read, uh, I, you know, of course I had a copy of I Am That and used to read, I used to, it, it, it would make you feel like there's this giant self that somehow I have to merge with or something. That's how I, I felt here. Like I'm just the ego and, and I need to get with the <laughs> get with the program. But I could never get it to work. That was, I was a bad student. Yeah, I flunked Muji, I flunked Eckhart, even though I met him five times, I went to his event five times and met him, sweetest guy, lovely man, Eckhart, looked right into his ocean blue eyes. But it was just the seeing that no path, there was no path, nothing was going to work, nothing. <laughs> Um, Maureen, I, I, like a lot of us, have read all of Ms. Vidata's work. Uh, I'm interested, you said that there was a final time in his, near the end of his life that he wrote a piece, um, disavowing, I think that's the word he used, what he was teaching. Uh, could you point me where that might be? Uh, well, it, it, he just disavowed the I am. Okay, uh, is that written somewhere? And actually, Zoe really, um, well, and actually, Morella, Zoe shook her head or nodded her head, yes, so she may know there is some final, and Morella, I think you got it too, it's some final book that discusses that. Do, do either of you know the name of that book? I didn't read it. Okay, thank you. No, I've just heard it mentioned and from several people that that's yeah, towards the end of his life, he started saying, nope, no, I am. <laughs> Morel is looking it up right now. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah I'm, I'm looking. It's in my Kindle. I haven't read it. I only read a little bit of it, so I don't know the title, but I'll get back. Thank you. Well, and there are a lot of stories about Ramana, too, that he would say different things to different people, depending on who he was talking to, a lot of it would be contradictory of other things that he had, you know, said. And uh, it's still to me, I just reminds me of this me that's looking for the right story, the story that's the real one, the valid and accurate. Which means, of course, comparing it to something else, right? Comparing it to what isn't right. That whole process, it just goes around and around and around. Which is beautiful, but what it's, it's kind of like, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't add anything to just, just what is without knowing any, you know, it's, it's all, it is knowing, it's looking for knowing. And it's the feeling like there's some knowing missing here and I gotta get it, I gotta find it. 
You can't stop. Well, yeah, that's that's me. That's the me. And I think I feel like there's something here that's just in this meeting. It isn't, it isn't that, it isn't about that. There isn't, it's just, it doesn't need any of that. <laughs> it's already what it is. Anyway. And it's open. It's just completely open to receive whatever whatever is here. And it it's not looking to compare it to something or to to find something in it that yeah that it can get. What well, what what could it be re open to receiving if it's everything? Ah. What could it be? What could anything be? <laughs> I mean, again, to me, when I hear that, that's it's it's just a looking for a description, an answer of something that I can know. It's looking for a story that's that's describes the real accurate, you know, what's going on. There's got to be somebody here who's who's open or who's receiving. I to I don't I don't think this is yeah, receiving. You know, I just said something about receiving and so because it's an image we use language because you know, it's always going to be in that form. It sounds like a person doing something or a person getting something or a person knowing something or whatever. But I'm, you know, is that here? Is that here aside from just a story? And no, I can't, I can't say what, the, I can't say anything about, about what it is. I think we say things about what it is and make comments, although the wisdom in seeing that what's said is absolutely a pointer. It's not the truth. Someone said, I think it was Don or maybe Alan, that, that the truth is, the closest to the truth is silence. And, and perhaps as the, the quality that was the, uh, the residual persona of the Sagadara, I, I, I have no idea, but as he clarified it, he saw it, there was a slight changing in the language that he offered. I don't know that, it makes sense. You can, uh, sorry, Michael, just to piggyback on what Dan said, the reason I read Nisargadatta was because I wanted to get something. Plain and simple. That's a hard book. I probably started that book, no lie, 27 times. That's a tough one to get through. But I definitely was looking for the final understanding, the ultimate, ultimate. It's not in a story. It's not in any book. And I used to read a ton of non-duality books, a ton. I don't think I've read a book in three years. It's just, the words just feel dead. It's just this aliveness. It's just this. And if silence is the truth, which sounds good to me, uh, if we want to say truth, there's something called truth, but uh, yeah, 
um, that silence is is what is, and it's it's what is in whether there's sounds like sound or sounds like noise or sounds like talking or it's all the silence. It's all that truth because the truth doesn't stop. I mean, it's all it doesn't go anywhere. It's always what is. It's always here. So that silence is, you could say, is what is. It's in the it's in the talking, and in the searching, and in the questioning. It's. I think that's kind of what this meeting is about. It's just kind of pointing to, yeah. Well, that's sil that's the silence in all of that. That's well, yeah. Just pointing to it. I don't know, saying anything about it, but yes. So this is the silence. Uh, and the silence of everyone showing up and seeming like like telling stories. Sounding like words. Morella put the book name in the chat, you guys. Yeah, consciousness and the absolute. There's some sexy titles for the me. Hey, listen, I'm so guilty. I bought so many of those books. I'm telling you, you got to fall off the bike yourself to appreciate. <laughs> One of the things I love about Nisargadatta seemingly is just that he blew open the whole concept of, you know, what <laughs> the <laughs> enlightenment or whatever looks any particular way. I mean, he was yelling at people, throwing them out, smoking cigarettes one or after the others. It's just blah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Reminds me when the Beatles went to India to get enlightenment and found out oh, he's just human. Oh. Say, say that again, please. Remember the Beatles went to India with I think especially George Harrison to yes. get enlightenment. Yes. They found the guru was just a human being. I was hitting on their girlfriends. Right. And so this isn't saying there's anything wrong with practices. If, if the urge there to sit and do a meditation or do a mantra rises, that's fine. Really, it's here's the sad news for the spiritual aspirant is meditating on a secret word and playing tennis are the same. <clears throat> There's just two different things the body can seem to do. But the, the specialness, oh my God, when I was meditating on, yeah. We did an, an interview with a, a friend that uh, isn't there and uh, and um, we were talking about applied non-duality, you know, using the message to become a better me or whatever happens, you know, none of it's wrong. It's just what happens. Um, but uh, he he was talking about the vibration of when when people speak, that basically the minute that it becomes a teaching, the minute I'm the teacher and I'm going to impart something to you, he said, it all falls apart. And he said, he was talking about some person who was considered, he's a fairly well-known spiritual teacher, and had, he had written him a, an email. And at the beginning of it, the first line was, time is mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, the guest said, the person speaking said, and you know, I just couldn't read any further. <laughs> And he said, actually, my the impulse was to go pat my deer or just take a breath of fresh air 
or tell someone I love them. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and I don't know, that was, that just really was beautiful to me. Yeah. Lovely. Because really, you know, I mean, I know that part in myself that becomes pedantic or preachy or whatever. And uh, and it, it really does, get, I mean, innocently, I mean, fuck, I don't know anything <laughs> more what I'm doing than anybody. But um, it, it's, it's basically um, engaged in apparent separation. Some idea that I have something that I really need to give you because you don't have it. And and here it is. And of course, like, where is that going to go energetically? But, you know, in the toilet, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also so, I mean, condescending. I mean, how you lack. Yeah, I'm sorry. And I need to fix you. And I'm the one to do it. But that, but that is so valid and accurate an aspect of what is. It also is what is, is it not? And, and yet we get whipsawed by it because I get whipsawed by that, that this isn't it, it's something separate and divisive and conflicted. And I can't at that moment return to the revelation that this too is it. And this too is also the absolute, absolute manifesting, but that's not, there, right there is a little bit of pain or tension. And that, you know, it, it was said, and the Zagadana himself said that the only person that ever understood what he was really talking about was Maurice Friedman. And, and Buddha felt that after all these years of teaching, very few really understood who cares, Michael? Who, who cares? It doesn't, it presents the fact that that is what is. Who cares? That's also the absolute, but it's, it royals, it, it is part and parcel of the human experience. We can transcend it, we can see it, like you and the MRI, I applaud you for it. I would like to have that, but the recognition there is this, you know, we're born in, in, in shit and blood, and we have this experience. I, and, and I'm not saying that it isn't also, from another point of view, illusory and transient, and also the absolute. But no, there's no, there, there's no and the absolute. But, so. the, there is no absolute either. It's emptiness, nothing, nothing, or silence. We could use words till we're blue in the face, but. Beyond these words, I'm using, you're using, there's nothing. And none of us, all we say about it is our own pretensions about it, our own pointing. Or what, pointing. Michael, Michael, what are, you, what are you looking for? I want to know why the fuck I keep getting separated in the morning and I can't resolve. Okay. <laughs> very right. simple. Very okay. simple. I want what you have. Is Give that me. right? No. Now I understand that that you what you have is perfect just the way it is, and what I have is perfect just the way it is. Yeah. Now those aren't just words, though. I was telling Alice. Alice and I were having a lovely phone conversation. Alice, remember I mentioned about the tea? I think in Cozy said it was about a tea. If you have the space outside the teapot, there's space, and the space inside the teapot. So there's space inside the teapot, space outside. If the teapot breaks, let's say it's made of ceramic and we hit it with a hammer. And one second. Okay. And we hit it with a hammer and the teapot itself just disintegrates, just breaks apart. Where's the dividing line between the space inside the teapot and the space outside the teapot? Well, someone had a hammer. <laughs> I want that fucking hammer. But I get your metaphor. It's, it's all oneness. It's all absolute. Yeah, it's just and the I'm, space. It's just the best space. moments. I absolutely appreciate what you're saying. And yet, 
what Maureen shared and I just shared and others just shared from time to time? Well, so what I'm saying is the space there that that voice seems to be kind of, is the same space here, is the same space in, in Kosi. It's all the same. It's everybody here at the meeting. There's not mm -hmm. different spaces. Yes. So that's the, the one. That's the unity. That's the no separation. So it's already whole and complete. Already. Would you like me to be honest or not? Well, just speak from right here in this moment. Don't if you if you don't mind. Look, it is, and I said from your lips to God's ear. <laughs> yeah. for, 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 you know, from the absolute to ajata to nothingness, the eternal grace of whatever is. Yeah, I'll have some of those. In fact, All right. yeah. Well, I like it this morning. Well, let's ask Inkosi. Welcome, Inkosi. Hi, Inkosi. Hi, Hello, hello, Alice. Hello, everyone. So we're talking about that which is, that which is, is truly incomparable. Uh, if you could uh, rephrase that, uh, what? Incomparable? Yeah, in incomparable. That that what is cannot be compared to anything. Uh, yeah. e ever fresh. Okay. Alive. Yeah, it, it cannot be compared because it's everything. <laughs> yeah, there's no division. There's no separation. You know. Even what seems to be comparing is already it. So. <laughs> There's nothing outside of it. Everything is this. No matter which shape or form it may appear to be. Talking, wondering, anticipation, expecting. <laughs> so everything is already. What is? It's already this. As I always say, there is no escaping this. So no one has ever done anything. No one has ever asked any question. No one has ever given any answer. This is just what seems to be happening. Oh, it's happening for no one. So <laughs> it's just this <laughs> as it is. There's nothing wrong or right with it. There's no sufferer already. So this may appear as somebody who's suffering. It may appear as somebody who's asking a question. It may appear as somebody who knows even. It may appear as uh, somebody who's clueless. It appears as a wall, as a floor, as space, as everything. There's nothing outside of this. Nobody outside of this. So the one who wants to know is already not there. It's just everything or what is appearing as somebody who wants to know. 
there's no real Noah here. So anything may happen here. Really, this doesn't mind because there's nothing outside of it. Oh, this is happening to me is also what is appearing as that, as those words. No, oh, I can't take this anymore. This is too much for me. It's also what is appearing as dance. <laughs> yeah, just making these examples, you no, know, just to clarify to nobody. <laughs> But ghost seems to know something that's also this appearing as that. <laughs> now this message is dull. I've been hearing this for you from for years and years. That's also <laughs> this everything appearing as those words. <laughs> there is no escaping this. There's no one here to do anything. There's no doer ready. And so this is not trying to convince anyone. These are just words appearing from nothing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's it. That's beautiful. Yeah, I heard you in a way that I've not heard you before with what you just said and Kosi. Yeah, very beautiful, thank you. Yeah, I think we have some, one, some good one-liners in there for you to post, okay. huh, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Michael character seems to find them. The one who wants to know is already not there. Yes, you got it. That was the one that stuck out of my head. You know me too well. It's just, <laughs> it's just so gorgeous. It's like stunning to me. It's like more valuable than a diamond. So yeah, it's more valuable than a diamond that you said, and I, I agree for me, but again, it's more valuable than a diamond because as I hear this, I um, grow or I'm, um, I, um, what do you call it? I'm uh, more alive, you know, in the direction. and. Um, but that's that's not it, right? I mean, or oh, I'm I'm losing it. It's like so. I listen to Nkosi. I listen to you, and it's very valuable. I mean, I, I love it. Um, but there's no one here. There's no one there. There's no Nkosi speaking to me and I'm not here, but I'm saying here, I'm loving it. And I have that kind of experience. So is that just everything being me? Uh, me everything being me thinking that there is you out there saying something 
And then I interpret that as, oh man, that's cool. And I feel better. But none of that is me, right? And none of that is you. That's, you're just saying that's just, it's just happening. What I'm saying right now, what you're apparently saying, what everything is going on in this meeting is just, oh boy. So it's, it's just, you're saying it's just happening. And then period, not right? Just period, it's happening. Is that sort of what I'm, um, <laughs> am I that's, close? <laughs> that's it too. <laughs> right. Nothing outside of this already. Yeah. Every weight, every sensation, every thought, everything is already this. The one who's asking a question is already wholeness, asking a question. But I, but I, I can't know that, right? There's no one there to know right, yeah. already. Yeah. Oh man, okay. <laughs> it's just everything. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how this meeting began. As I said, er, er, there's just everything and everything can't be known. John, when I'm listening, I'm having some flashbacks. Back in my uh, late teens and early twenties, we would do acid. <laughs> and we just try to figure it out and we would just keep at it and at it and trying to figure it out you know yeah. needed and then we needed a booster dose because we thought maybe the dosage wasn't right yet yeah there's that sense that trying to figure out there's that well maureen right we talked about comparison that it's better to try and figure out, figure it out than to not try and figure it out. That's better. <laughs> I, I just say that I got a surprise this week because having been listening to this message for, for a little while now, I finally came to the conclusion that um, life doesn't have a have a purpose or a meaning <clears throat> my life doesn't have a purpose or a meaning and that was pretty um uh, disconcerting because i think i've always thought i've looked for a reason to be here on the planet you know why is it all happening and what does it mean and i've searched in all sorts of different places. And now listening to this message, <clears throat> it seems to me life doesn't have a purpose. <laughs> that was a shock. And yeah, yeah. Where, where do I go if, I, if there's no purpose or meaning? <laughs> Come on, Casey, you talk to me about that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's simply what is. It's just what is. Yeah, it's, it's not going anywhere. And then it may seem as if it's going somewhere, but that's okay too. But there really, there's nowhere to go. It's just what's happening. And then there, there's nobody in it. So the one who has just asked that, that question uh, is just everything. There's no you there mm. who was asking a question already. Mm. So Thank everything, you. Go on. Yeah, everything is just beautiful the way it is. And you can have a purpose too, Faith, and that's this too. Yeah, well, <clears throat> it was just disconcerting not to have a purpose. <laughs> That's all. I thought 
what the fuck, here I am. Oh. I, there's, no, no re- <laughs> there's no reason for my existence, no purpose, to no, no meaning to life. And then I went online and I looked up um, the search for meaning by Viktor Frankl, I think. I thought, he, you know, he was in dire circumstances and somehow he wrote a book about, about the search for meaning. I don't know what's in the book, but <laughs> I was just looking for answers to what's the meaning of life. And, but I suppose it's all wrapped up in the me thing, thinking and wondering. And Anyway, I've just sort of let go of that, but it was very confronting when it first happened. Yeah, so there's nobody here. It's just life. It's pressing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very freeing to not have a purpose or meaning. <clears throat> it's very freeing to not have a purpose yeah. or meaning. Very freeing. Yeah, I think yeah. Alice went, I think when I got over the shock of it, I found that it was freeing. It was just a shock at the beginning and then I when I relaxed into it, I thought, oh, wow, well, yeah, that's better. Mm. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that doing doesn't happen. So mm. going to work, making breakfast, all of that continues. Any last comments or questions before we close out this evening? Well, just to say, it's very precious. I'm very thankful that I can share that sort of a deep experience in this group. And I appreciate everybody's presence. So beautiful, thank you. So beautiful, everybody. You're so beautiful. (laughs) Whatever this is, (laughs) so beautiful, thank you. Yeah, and I just wanted to add, too, thank you for sharing, Faith. Um, you could wake up tomorrow and have a purpose, and that could be freeing and liberating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being of, being of service is here a great purpose, a great satisfaction. Yeah, this has no rules. Any, yeah. Any anything can happen. Doesn't yeah, mind. <laughs> what what in Kosi? It doesn't mind. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe what it was was sort of cutting cutting the roots of my identity that I a fixed identity that I have to have a purpose. I have to have meaning. So once that's been cut and I, I experience the not having a purpose, then I'm free to have a purpose or not have a purpose if you follow that. Yeah. Well, and Kosi, I, I, I think I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alice. Yeah, good, Alice. We'll, we'll bottle it and sell it. <laughs> Thank you, guys, to each and every yeah. one of you for coming. We so love and appreciate all of you. And Thank Kosi, you, and brother, as Thank always. You, no Thank worries. you, guys. Have a great night. Good night. Good night, good night everyone. Yeah.